speaking to you now from the uh, coach room in the mezzanine of the Hotel Marion. And with me at this moment is Mr. Jack Webb, who is the director and also star of Pete Kelly's Blues, which begins its showing, or rather began yesterday at the Capitol Theater. And we're very happy to have Jack with us. How do you like Little Rock? It's just wonderful, Dan. We had a nice, warm reception at the airport. I was quite pleased and flattered that that many people would turn out to see us. And you are now, uh, as I gather, an honorary Arkansas traveler. Indeed I am. That's one of the proudest possessions I own right now. Your wonderful governor just presented us with that. Arkansas I made us an honorary Arkansas traveler. Well, let's start on Pete Kelly's blues. Of course, I'm sure that there's nobody in our listening audience who is not familiar with Dragnet and your direction and uh, the picture itself. How long have you had the idea of making a movie about jazz? Well, quite a while, Dan, about 14, 16 years. Not a movie. I've been interested in this kind of motion picture as a uh, future project. I never thought I'd ever have the opportunity to make such a picture or even make a picture, period. But uh, it's been about that long. As I understand, you uh, had Pete Kelly's blues on radio for a short time in the summer, is that correct? Yes, that's right. About, uh, oh, 1949. It was on for 13 weeks only. It was on at the same time as Dragnet Radio, and it became a little too much of a chore to keep both going at the same time. Well, now, uh, we've talked about Dragnet. Uh, when are you going to be uh, making appearances at the Capitol Theater here in Little Rock? What time? One today, I think at 3 o'clock, and another one at... Nine, I believe, tonight. And then you're leaving Little Rock tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, yes. We go to Shreveport. We're just in most of these cities one day, Dan. It's kind of a whirlwind tour, as it were. It's a 37-day tour, and we hope to see some 30 cities. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the picture, just a little bit about the plot. Well, uh, generally, it's the story of a man who has a seven-piece Dixieland orchestra or band, and uh, he plays in the Kansas City Speakeasy. The period is 1927, and uh, he's doing all right until a gangster moves in and tries to take over the band business, and from then on, the story unravels, and we think it's kind of exciting. We hope the folks agree with us. You directed the picture, correct? Yes, I did. I see. Uh there's a lot of wonderful music in it, as I understand. You have it on album, is that correct? Yes, I understand that your station, KVLC, is Little Rock's number one music station. Is well, that right? Thank you very much, and of course you're right. Uh, you have uh, two albums on, is that right? The Pete Kelly yes, album? there's a Columbia album that features Ray Heindorf, who uh, did a lot of the writing and uh, certainly all of the scoring of the motion picture, and uh, features Matty Matlock's jazz band. And I did one together with the Pete Kelly's Big Seven, on Victor with a little narration. There are others to come out, you know, with uh -huh. Peggy Lee and Ella Fitzgerald. Uh -huh. They both have albums coming. That RCA album of yours is a tremendous album, and I can't say enough about it. We played it, uh, we have been playing it, rather, for the past week or so, and that narration of yours does wonders. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry there seems to be a little lag between the tracks, but the record companies, as you know, obviously from playing records, I used to be a disc jockey, too, for about three years. Oh, were you? Yes. And uh, some of the boys like the introductions, and, and, I, and I suppose the record companies presume some don't, uh -huh. and so therefore they leave a little space so that you can either use them or not use them. They might get kind of dull, I guess, if you use them more than once. So. Well, do you think that the influence of Pete Kelly's blues and the music contained therein will mean a, a regeneration, a resurrection of the music of the 20s? Well, I don't like to think that we're that important in the music field that we could cause any kind of a regeneration, but I certainly hope that we lean a little bit more toward normal progressions and melodies. Let's get back to Gershwin and Cole Porter and some of those and maybe take a half a step away from rhythm and blues, which I find very little melody in. However, as long as the youngsters, as long as the youngsters like it, they're to be certain certainly they should have what they want. But I do hope they don't give up uh, straight music and pure music as we know it in, in as jazz music. Well, one of the most important questions, naturally, will be what comes next. You've done Dragnet, you've done Pete Kelly's Blues. What are your future plans? I think we ought to quit while we're ahead, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, I think the reception of Pete Kelly's Blues will have a great deal to do with what our next project is, and I have no idea right now what just what it will be, Dan. Right. Uh, Certainly want to thank you, Jack, and we want to uh, wish you continued success on your tour, and at the same time, we hope that your picture goes over with a great big bang and the music as well. Thank, thank you, you very much, and I hope you enjoy your stay in Little Rock. Sitting next to Jack Webb, we have a gentleman here. What is your name, sir? Jimmy Moses. Oh, that's right. Jimmy Moses of Moses Melody Shop. I'm in the way of something here. Uh, you, uh, of course, have the uh, music. At, uh, Moses Dan, Moses. that's right. I was really interested in getting Jack Webb's opinion, uh, and you fortunately and phrased the question very well on the advent of uh, the so-called 20 music, the jazz music. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a terrific job with the Victor album so far, Jack. The Columbia record in this area has been a little short in coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd say even though the movie opened only yesterday, uh, 
This is the ad we are on today. Isn't that uh, splendid? On the record, and we've had a tremendous uh, response to that, uh, both last week when it first came in, and then today I left the shop about 20 minutes ago, and we've had a nice kickoff on this music. Well, you've got to remember, too, at the same time that the picture only opened yesterday, so when people do see it, they're naturally going to want the music, and you, you can expect larger and larger response to it as the picture plays. That's right. Thank preference, too, and I think the public uh, prefers the narrations that Doc Webb give in this particular album. Do you well, feel I mean, that way? Well, I hope so. We did it with that in mind, but, you know, as I say, the recording company executives all feel that a lot of the disc jockeys like to make their own introductions, and so they've left a little space, and I think it, 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 it uh, in some ways, for my taste, spoils the pace of the record. However, if people get tired of hearing me, they can always leave me out and listen to the music, which I think is very good. I didn't play it, so I can say that. Thank you very much, Jimmy Moses and Jack Webb. We uh, certainly want to thank both these gentlemen for talking to us, telling us about the music and about the motion picture. And as I say, we'd like to uh, think that uh, Jack Webb will like Little Rock, and perhaps we can see him again real soon. Thank you.